Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Willalane, and we are here at the Hamptons Art Fair in Southampton, and I'm here with this fabulous gallery owner, and she's going to introduce herself to the camera. Hi, I'm Tatiana, and I'm the owner of Black and White Gallery. That was originally from Brooklyn and now from Southampton. So tell my audience, is this the first, this is like the very first time that you've ever done this. This is the very first time that they've actually had the Southampton Art Fair. Am I correct in assuming that, or have they, have they done they, this they've, before? They've had South, this particular fair, it's the premiere, this particular one. But they've had other fairs here in the past. Interesting, interesting. So now tell my audience about your art gallery and how many pieces are we looking at right here in this booth? So I started my gallery in 2002 out of Williamsburg in Brooklyn and I was I've been representing emerging American artists, young artists and still work with them. So this is very special, this particular presentation because uh, this is a tribute to my late husband who was a quite famous artist and passed away a year and a half ago uh, from COVID-related. Uh, oh, how sad. Yes, and uh, he was quite young, only 69 years old, a very successful career, and that's kind of a small tribute to him. And that's why, you know, that's his artwork. It's sort of a mini retrospective of his work. It's gorgeous. I love the painting right behind us, right here. This is stunning. He became very well known. He started the style in the early 80s. We came to this country in 1980 from Ukraine, and uh, he has always been an artist, and I've always been his supporter, and that's how we lived our life. And he started making that kind of art because that he was very effect, um, affected by the glossy magazines, by the advertising that he saw here, and it was also new and exciting for us, and that's the result of that body of work. There are also two uh, lithographs um, in the front that are from that period. Interesting. Yeah, so he was very much into women and... Uh, uh, Sexy uh, women, right? You, you bet. <laughs> and the reviewers called him them witches of Shimon Ockstein. That's his name. <laughs> How funny is that? That is so funny. So now, um, this painting is beautiful too. Right? This is one of his last paintings. It's very abstract. Yes. He kind of returned to this uh, abstract. He was very, we moved to Southampton full time like three or four years ago. He established his studio here and he was very, very, so n nature became his muse here. Like women were his muse before, and here when we moved here, nature became his muse. And this is kind of a tribute to the beauty of the east end of Long Island. You can see a little bit, of, it's, a, it's a mixed media, you can see uh, some landscapes there and the signs, local signs. And he was trained, he was academically trained back in the Soviet Union, so he really wanted to as was he was telling me, I wanted to get free with my hand, I just want to paint. 
And that's the uh, how fabulous. That is beautiful. Yeah, Just gorgeous. Thank you. And in between, you see black and white pieces. And that was his period in between all these graphites. And with those pieces, he ended up in major museums, like in the Whitney Museum and the Brooklyn Museum, and actually was the I would say the front runner of this particular medium, you know, graphite on paper and graphite on canvas. So that's kind of a very short retrospective. Well, the art is just beautiful in this booth. Tell my audience, where can we go to find out more information about your art? What is the website? The website is blackandwhiteartgallery.com. And if you, your audience wants to see Shimon's work, it's Ockstein, O-K-S-H-T-E-Y-N.com. That's his, that's his, spell it again. Okay, S-H-T-E-Y-N dot com. And your name again, spell Tatiana. your name? Tatiana, Tatiana, T-A-T-Y-A-N-A, and last name is Ockstein, the same. Beautiful, gorgeous, let's air kiss. Mwah, mwah. COVID friendly, and we'll be back in a moment, darlings, with more interviews right here at Southampton Art Fair in Southampton. Pink champagne kisses. Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Willa Lane, and we are here at the Southampton Fine Art Fair, and I am here in the Lawrence Fine Art Gallery, and I'm here with uh, Howard, Shapiro. Howard Shapiro. So, Howard, tell my audience what you think of this Hamptons Fine Art Fair. Well, you know what? The most important thing is that we're getting back to normal and we're able to see the art up close and personal. I think people miss that. So kudos to Rick for putting this fair together, putting this fair together out here. And let's be honest, taking the chance that we wouldn't get shut down or there wouldn't be any kind of mandates. Thank God, thank God, right? Absolutely, absolutely. It's been a rough year, yeah. year and a half. It's, it's hard because you know, art is one of those things that you really can't buy online. You need to see it. You need to see the brush soaks. You need to see how the paint is laid. You need to see how the light hits it. So it's just absolutely important that we get back to showing art the way it's supposed to be seen. People do buy art for many different reasons. Some people buy art for investment purposes. And some people buy art just because they love the painting and they love the artist. Uh, I agree with you. I think the most important thing for anybody is to buy the art because you like it. Uh, but it never hurts to buy art that hopefully will go up in value. That's by major artists or artists who will get noticed. Um, all of the artists that you see in this booth right now are first and second generation abstract expressionist artists. So they began showing in the 50s and, and continued showing in the 60s. They're names that people know. They're in museums. This kind of art will hold value, and it's also beautiful. So it's a win-win. How many pieces are you showing in this particular booth? You know, we decided that less was more. So we're only showing, I think, 11 or 12 pieces, but as you can see, they're very big pieces. They're breathtaking, yeah. beautiful, beautiful pieces. Thank you. How many pieces? One, two, three, best. I think it's 12. 12 pieces. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Now, tell my audience, where are you located here in the Hamptons? We are in East Hampton, and we will be moving into the city in October. 
Uh, I still think that New York City is the locust of the locus of the art world, and we will be back, and we will be in the, in Chelsea. Fabulous. Can you tell my audience where we could go to learn more information? What is the website? www.lawrence-fine-arts.com. Gorgeous. Let's air kiss. Mwah, mwah. COVID friendly, COVID friendly. And we'll be back in a moment, darlings, with more interviews right here at the Southampton Art Fair in Southampton. Keep Thank watching. Pig champagne kisses. Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Willow Lane, and we are here at the Southampton Art Fair in Southampton, and I'm here with this fabulous artist, and he's going to introduce himself to the camera. Hi, my name's Kevin Barrett. So, Kevin, tell my audience about your sculptures that we are looking at right here. Tell us all about them and what kind of work went in, like this one in particular. This one is absolutely stunningly gorgeous. What went into something like this? Well, Harp is basically a sculpture. Uh, it's a welded aluminum piece. It's got an automotive paint on it. It's one of these pieces from a series that I did a few years ago. It's an oldest piece in the show I'm doing uh, that basically relates to human and nature and music. And it's sort of my intake on that, I guess, is the best way to say it. But it's a lot of welding. I do get a lot involved with the materials and the process of building the pieces. And I, I'm, I'm kind of like a found art guy, but it creates his own found art. <laughs> so I create my own objects before I put them together. So this piece was one of those, and it was the start of that series. Just gorgeous. How long did it take you to, to create this? Uh, two months. That long, two months. It's a start to finish, because I usually start with models first. I use maquettes, and taking the scraps and putting them together and then making it balance, I can then work out the next size and it's simple so it's this is the hardest part do you have a preconceived idea in your mind of how big you want to make something before it is actually made yes yeah, sometimes uh, sometimes it just happens it depends on materials and what I have available and then I could sit and figure out when I'm looking at the maquette deciding well I think I need to draw it twice the skies or three times and if I'm really lucky someone will commission me to do a piece that's 16 feet tall oh my god is, is that harder is that more work no, it's actually easier because it's really yeah, because I hire someone else to do it ah, <laughs> you're funny, you're funny. <laughs> so, so anyway you've, you've been doing this for so long yep how many years have you been an artist uh, over 40 and I say that oh, carefully because I started off I'm a son of an artist. My father is a sculptor. It's in your DNA. Yes, and my grandfather was a painter. So I got combination of both, the painting and the sculpting. What do you like better? I like them both. It's hard. It's hard. It's like choosing a child. What do you, which one do you like better? I like them all. And I, every time I do a new piece, I like that one the best. But then as soon as I do another one, that one goes into the back burner, and then I do another one. Fabulous, fabulous. So now, this was a very difficult time. A year and a half we've gone through with this COVID. Yes. 
tell my audience, how has that affected your work? Well, being sort of locked into the studio is nothing new to me. So actually, it didn't affect me that way at Sometimes all. Sometimes it's more inspirational. You could well, do more work. Well, I wasn't being distracted by get, having to go into, say, Boston or New York City as often. So I was sort of stuck in the studio, which is a godsend. Because then I got more work done, actually. Because I didn't have the distractions of other shows to go see or art to do. So everything got sort of put on hold, obviously. And we all just sort of had to make do. But I was happy. I had everything at my fingertips that I could do. So I created a whole series, and I got into the paintings more and, and more. Tell my ways, how many pieces of art did you create during COVID? Well, it's hard to put a number on it, but I could probably say between paintings, probably about 12 to 15 new paintings and about uh, eight new sculptures. That many? And that, well, that to me, and that's not a, a whole heck of a lot because I'm doing everything myself. And so I do everything, I mean, from ordering the material, to cutting it, to welding it, to finalizing it, uh, painting it. I actually have someone now that does a lot of painting for me, the actual automotive painting stuff. But this stuff is fun for me to do because it's something new, the paintings. The paintings are automotive paint along with acrylics, and I paint like an abstract expressionist painter. And then I come back with these primers that are using the white coating on top. And then I use my grinders that I use for finishing the metal on the surfaces so I can so I'm not just painting and drawing anymore I'm using the grinders interesting so that's how I get sort of these silver effects interesting interesting it's, it's basically removing paint so I'm sort of doing the opposite and I never know what the final piece is going to look like until I finally put that grinder down and say that's it and so now if we want to learn more about your work where can we go do you have a website yes it's k barrett well I'm sorry it's kevin barrett sculptures.com you could also go to kbarrettnyc at gmail.com. And you could also go to the scout. And see fine art. She's the one you really want to see. <laughs> Absolutely. See fine art. She's the best. Well, you are a terrific artist. You're very creative. All your work is amazing. And I thank you so much for doing the interview. And let's do an air kiss. Mwah. Mwah. Well, thank you so we much. We have to do that for COVID, <laughs> COVID friendly. And we'll be back with more celebrity interviews and more artists right here at Southampton's Art Fair in Southampton. Keep watching, darlings. Pink champagne kisses. Introduce yourself to the camera, darling. My name is Louis K. Mizell, and I opened my gallery 60 years ago. Uh, I opened in Soho and started Soho in 1972, and I've been there ever since. And um, what I'm doing out here, instead of bringing the gallery out here, I did a socially distant sculpture tour that runs from West Hampton Beach to Sagaponic. And there are 15 major sculptures along the highway. And, and now I have a booth over here of realist painting and sculpture. Tell my audience, what do you think of uh, this art fair in Southampton? I can't tell you that yet. It opened an hour ago. There's hardly anybody here. However, the 4 o'clock tickets were very expensive, and the 7 o'clock tickets are less. And hopefully we'll have some more people we'll come in. More people come in at yeah, 7 o'clock. I think so. So, tell my audience, how do you think 
art has changed in 60 years. Has it changed? Well, I started 60 years ago with the Abstract Expressionists, and then I was friends with the pop artists. But I was a kid, I was a groupie, and then pop artists brought imagery back, and then realism in the 60s came on, and towards the end of that period I started finding artists that were painting the most incredible realism using photographs to gather information, like Chuck Close and Audrey Flack and Richard Estes. And I put together a group of these artists on my gallery on, 50, on 79th Street and Madison Avenue, and a critic came in and said, what do you call these? They're great. I said, I don't know, they're great realists. He says, no, give me a name. I said, well, they're working from the photograph. So the photograph, uh, photorealist. And he wrote an article, My Zell is Showing Photorealism, and that's where the word came into existence. And that's what I've been doing ever since. I've got other things. I'm also the biggest and best dealer in the world in the great American pinup, if you know what that is. 30s, 40s, and 50s. The yes, sexy I girls know pinups. My calendars. husband likes them, too. So I'm the biggest dealer, collector, writer. Uh, pinup art. Pinup art. Yeah. What's your favorite? Out of all the pinup girls, you must have had a, f a favorite. The pinup artist, the best one is Gil Elfgren, and I wrote the book on him. I wrote the book on pinup, which got 900 illustrations. I wrote the books on photorealism. So I write books, and I present, and I represent, and have a good time. Do you have a particular pinup girl that you like? The, not not a particular girl, but a particular artist. Okay. You know, Betty Page was one that Betty everybody Page, liked. Betty Page, everybody liked. But uh, that's a different kind of story. Yeah, Betty Page, poor but, girl, she didn't end up so good. Well, she did it for about three years, and then she became a very born-again Christian and yeah, gave it up. Religious. Yeah, but I, uh, somebody did a book on her, and we presented it in my gallery, and we got her on the phone in California, and she talked to everybody on the phone. I mean, I knew her back then, so. Amazing. She's still alive, right? Isn't she still alive? I don't know. Alive? I don't know. I haven't I talked to her. I think she is. I think she's still alive. I, I don't think, think she so. is. You no, you don't think so? No, I, I, it, it's too long ago. I mean, I don't know. Anyway. Well, you are a fascinating gentleman. Fascinating. You have so much to tell us, so much to talk about. I know you're busy. You want to get it back into that no. gallery right there? But no. It was more than two seconds, so. It was more than two seconds. Tell my audience, where can we learn more information about Lewis K. Meisel Gallery? Do you have a website? MeiselGallery.com. MeiselGallery.com. Right, and you'll see on there my, uh, oh, you'll see everything about me. What's the, tell my audience, what is the one artist that inspire, is, is so inspirational to you that you want everybody in the world to know about well, this person? When I, when I was a teenager, I met Stamos and Franz Klein and Rothko, and they were like major artists of this aspect of uh, abstract expressionism, and I ended up representing Stamos until he died. And then there was Mel Ramos, who was a pop artist, painting nude girls and sexy girls, and I represented him until he died from those two movements. And then uh, came the photorealism. One more time, the website. The website is MizelGallery.com, M-E-I-S-E-L, Gallery.com. Gorgeous. Let's air kiss. Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Willow Lane, and we are here at the Southampton Art Fair. And I'm here with Tracy Turco. Tracy, tell my audience, what did you think of the art? I thought it was beautiful because I love art in any form, shape, color, size. And when it, you know, when it pops from 
from the walls, you want to just take it home with you because it makes you happy. It certainly does, and it is such a beautiful day. It's so gorgeous, and the art is spectacular. Tell my audience, now Tracy, did you saw some of the art, did, was there any pieces in there that you really liked? Well, the art that resonates with me most are mostly the blue, the blue chip artwork. I happen to like the calder that I saw. Um, there, there's a couple pieces that just like really um, pop, pop and attracted me into the booth. But those are all the names that you know, but I also feel like it's important to give credence to all the new artists that are up and coming as well. Fabulous. Tracy, you look gorgeous. Tell my audience Thank what you. you're wearing. This is gorgeous, this dress. You'll love this dress. This is my personal website, tracyturco.com, along with my shoes that I just design and sell in the Tiki Hotel. But um, our brand is called TNT, uh, you know, boutique hotels. And so we have our own website. We just added two more new hotels. So in Palm Springs, we have four hotels now. I'm going to come and visit you. And Perfect. thank you so much for doing the interview. Let's air kiss. Mwah, mwah. Yeah. And we'll be back with more interviews. Keep watching, darling. Speak champagne kisses. Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Fardell. dressed to impress one of a kind girl I was brought into this world wrapped up in pearls I love to mingle though my husband reminds me I'm not single I meet and greet both the famous and the elite I ride in limousines drinking the finest champagne wearing fur dazzling diamond jewelry a girl can't complain I live in upscale life, dining in the finest restaurants, eating the best caviar for free. And no matter how much I eat cognac, ooh, ooh, I sip cognac, ooh, ooh, ooh. This has been a Crybaby Productions, darlings.